welcome to another DC Today, the Thursday edition. Uh, we're going to bring DC Today to a close for the week and then come to you with a dividend cafe tomorrow, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. The uh, market did some weird stuff today. So first of all, let me just tell you, February closed with the Dow down 4%, the S&P down 2.5%, and the bond market was down 2. 7% for the month. So basically, um, every index that we track more or less was down in February. And every index that we track is still up on the year, um, but much less so. You know, So January was up more than February was down, whether you're talking about bonds, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, uh, emerging markets, you know, all these different things. And, and yet gave up a, a significant part of the return in the month of February, as you probably know. Um, now, today, the S&P was down a fair amount. NASDAQ was down a fair amount. The Dow was not, but it was at least when the market first opened, as I was sitting on set at Fox News this morning, Fox Business with uh, Stuart Barney's show, 29 of the 30 stocks in the Dow were down. But the Dow was up because one stock, a company called Salesforce, um, had announced uh, uh, earnings and, and issues yesterday that caused it to be up so much that it was making the whole Dow go up. So it was kind of a weird deal. And then even in the S&P and NASDAQ, which have a very large weighting of Tesla, which was down a lot, it was sort of throwing it off. So it's very rare you see a day like that where one particular company is distorting a whole index, uh, uh, but it's even more rare that it's happening twice with different companies and in different directions, one to the upside, one to the downside. But then all that changed um, near, oh, I'm going to say uh, about two hours or so before the close. Uh, the Fed governor in Atlanta, um, Raphael Bostic, said that he was firmly in favor of continuing a quarter point hikes when asked about the idea of a half point hike. So I just can't tell you how stupid this is. That the same rate that we are going to get to, whether it's with a half a point move or quarter point moves, is not changing and didn't get repriced on the terminal side of the bond market and, and within the yield curve, and, and yet the market would move just on the idea that, well, the pace may end up being just at the quarter point move, which the Fed Funds futures market were already saying was the pace anyways. So, but again, to my point that so much of market movement right now is not about what the Fed will do or not do. It is about people trading around what they anticipate traders will trade around with the Fed. And that double redundancy is there on purpose. And I think it speaks to the need for some more prudence in the market. So again, with during uh, this tail end of earnings season, and you see some idiosyncratic results, you, you know, some people didn't like um, Tesla not giving a lot of specificity on some production developments. And the um, issue with, with Salesforce was kind of a surprise on, on their cost cutting there's different things individual companies can do, right? But then you see stuff like Silver Lake, which is a kind of digital crypto clearing um, uh, uh, bank, and they are just getting hammered. And it has nothing to do with that company. I don't know anyone who owns it. We don't own it. It's not a part of my point here, but it's a big news event. Why is it in the news? Because, again, it speaks to this sort of systemic pressure in that whole space. So those narratives are kind of 2022-ish, and they're sticking around in 23, um, around Fed front-running and trading and, and concerns or, or responding either upside or downside to a comment a Fed governor makes. I, I think you know how I feel about it. So the 10-year Treasury was up seven basis points today. Bond market was down, and yet you had um, equities rally. The Dow up 342 points on the day. The S&P and NASDAQ each up three quarters of a percent. Utilities, which have been really struggling, were up 1.82%. I imagine that's their best performing day of the year, but I'm not sure of that. 
And then financials were the worst performing sector. A lot of the banks got hit today and they were down about half a percent. Uh, oil was up a little bit, uh, around $78 a barrel. Initial jobless claims came in at 190000 um, which was a little bit below expectations, so still continued good news on the job front. And then mortgage rates jumped back above 7%. You may recall it was about three weeks ago now that they were, maybe four weeks ago. You know, it was three, it's about three weeks ago that I think they were sitting at their uh, low in the last, you know, eight months or so at 6.2%. They've come all the way back up to 7%. So that's the state of the economic data today. That's the state of the market. And uh, we're going to talk about national debt tomorrow in the Dividend Cafe. Reach out uh, to questions at thebonsongroup.com if you have any further questions. Um, there is a link in the DC Today uh, to my appearance on Varney this morning. I was on set for an hour. And so my team put together a compilation of just kind of my contributions throughout that hour. If you're so interested, that link is there. And uh, we're here for you. Thanks so much for listening, watching and reading the DC Today. Mm-hmm.